Welcome to Made in Alberta. I'm Barb Allard. Last time in our chapter called Retrofitting, we learned that the various components of the house work together as a system to produce heat in the winter and keep that heat in. We began a basement analysis as this is one area where the homeowner can often make substantial gains in energy efficiency for not much money. A professional evaluation will tell you how much you're going to save for a given upgrade and it will prioritize those upgrades um, so that you're not spending all your money on upgrades that aren't going to save you much energy to begin with. Only a complete home evaluation, which includes a computer analysis, can prioritize the best energy saving upgrade for the money. But Richard's experience and training tells him that insulating these basement walls will definitely pay off. The entire basement wall is uninsulated. It's losing heat out of the furnace, uh, the hot water tank, uh, the ducts themselves, and uh, it just sucks heat out like a vacuum. This is the fiberglass batting. Uh, fiberglass is, uh, you know, a little bit harder on the health, and so, you know, you want to use a mask. There is a better material out right now, which I don't have a sample of. It's called Roxol. Batting style insulation can be added by framing in a stud wall to the desired R value. This type of insulation has an R value of about 3.2 per inch. If you don't care about what the, the wall uh, looks like, um, or if you don't need to hang a lot of heavy items on the wall, you might want to just go the foam board route, particularly in utility rooms where there's lots of pipes, it's easy to cut. And you simply need to glue it onto the wall, and uh, you can actually put your drywall right on top of it. Certainly before you do any wall insulation though, you want to make sure that you don't have any significant cracks. This crack might be bringing in moisture and it uh, looks like some effort has been made to seal it up, but uh, it looks a little bit scary. Richard's instructions on how to seal the cracks in the basement walls are particular to this 82-year-old house. He can advise whether an engineer's report is also required. A polyethylene moisture barrier should also be installed in this case. You're going to run it down along the wall and then around the bottom of the stud wall if you use it and up and right up to the top of the floor joists. Okay. So that way that if you do get leakage through here the water is going to get down and underneath the floor you won't have to re remove the whole wall. But uh, only up to the ground level though. If you put it right up to the top then you can get moisture trapped in the wall assembly and you, you could have some problems. This episode of Made in Alberta was sponsored by Green Communities Edmonton Association. For more information about energy evaluations for your home, visit greencommunitiesedmonton.org or phone Richard at 437-5538. Join us again as we learn more about what's being done to retrofit Alberta's older buildings to a higher degree of energy efficiency.